So the next person I'm going to call met me recently, and when he came on the Zoom screen, I judged him, and I was like, wow, like this kind of person like follows my work and is so conscious. And then as he began talking, it became so apparent and I just fell in love with this person because he showed me how stereotypes simply don't hold true. So let me call on the stage Weston. Weston, where are you? There he is. You see, I'm not really judgmental, but look at him, okay? Show them all your tattoos and look. <laughs> so I was like, huh? And he's a PhD. He just got his doctorate in clinical psychology. So Dr. Weston. Awesome. You guys, I am, um, yes, I get, I get said that. I'll, Quite a bit. So how people refer to me, they'll be like, um, you're going to love Wes. He's amazing. He's an incredible therapist and clinician, but I got to give you a heads up. He looks like a pirate. And so, and this has been my evolution over time. I didn't always have this many tattoos, but um, what I want to use my time, I really want to say I'm, I'm honored and humbled to be here. And I want to tell a couple quick stories. So I am, I'm a PhD, LPC. My mom has been in the field for years. My grandmother has her EDD. And I'm, as a licensed professional counselor, I did therapy for years in private practice. Now I have a youth center that we serve young people and we deal with anxiety, substance abuse, self-harm, suicidality. We work with families. It's a beautiful blend. Um, but I want to go back to my own childhood. So I can remember, I think I was maybe four, five years old, and I was asking my mom all these questions. What does God look like? When can I talk to God? What kind of job does God have? What does God think is funny? And finally, my mom was like, Wes, just go write God a letter. And I was like, okay. So I went and I sat down and I was like, you know, God, what do you look like? When can I talk to you? I get done. My mom says, go bury it in the backyard. I go to the backyard. I bury it. Next morning, she's like, well, did you go dig it up? I go. I dig it up. And it says, dear Wes. I am neither male nor female. I'm in your heart. I'm all around you. You can call on me when you need. I'm in the birds, the trees. So this was my first moment as a young person in experiencing conscious parenting from my own mom. And she weaved in and out. She's got all her own shit. She's super, I also, very anxious and all this other stuff. But in that moment, I've carried that in my heart with me in so many different ways. And so that was a beautiful experience. And then... I went on with my own kind of dark night of the soul, 17 to 23, I had three arrests, emotional turmoil, suicidality, drug addiction. I turned a corner out of all that and devoted my life to helping young people that struggle in similar ways. So I'll bring it to, I'm for, thank you, yep. So I'm 40 years old now. My wife, Allison, is here. We've been married for 12 years, together 16, and we have two beautiful little daughters. Thank you. Nine, so Story is nine years old, and River is six. And the moment that kind of cracked my heart open, my, my conscious parenting moment was with our first daughter, Story. We had her, and I'm, I have a booming private practice, and I'm immersed in the Ph.D. program. And I'm working with countless young people and parents. And um, it was around the age of like one and a half. My wife goes, hey, story's regressing in her speech. Something's up. Something seems odd about her development. And I'm like, look, it's fine. You know, she's going to come to it on her own. But we go to the Marcus Autism Center. And my wife kind of leads this. And we get there and they do what's called the ADOS assessment on my daughter. And they come back and they say, definitively, we, we know your daughter is on the autism spectrum still. And here I am two years into the PhD, and I sit with these, you know, women who have done the assessment. And I'm like, can you talk to me a little bit about the etiology of autism and your understanding of the increase in percentage and all this? And I go, I'm just nailing them with all this stuff. And finally, the lady's like, let me go get my boss. I can't answer all these questions. That happens. We get done. I get in the minivan, and I just burst into tears. And I recognized that was all my own shit, all my projection, fear, defense mechanisms, 
what did it mean for me as a husband, as a father, to have a daughter with autism? And here I was, not willing to look at it, being scared to kind of accept it. And so that was a moment for me that was, how can I be a conscious parent and parent the child in front of me? And Story is a beautiful angel. She's amazing. She's got autism, sensory issues, but it has cracked my heart wide open like nothing else. It has been a gift. She is a teacher in so many ways. And so Dr. Shafali's work, this conscious parenting work, in every when I first heard Dr. Shafali, she said, um, a parent's greatest fear is a child in pain, but a child's greatest disservice is a parent who is unable to witness their pain. And I heard that and I carried that with me. And that came into every single session, every kid I worked with, every family I worked with. I finally felt like I don't care how these parents feel. I am going to tell them truth. And I am going to share Dr. Shafali's work. And I'm going to deliver this truth because it's what they need to hear in order to wake up. So I carry Dr. Shafali's work with me in everything that I do. And I'm honored to be here, grateful to have this time. Thank you guys very much.